There's the Roadrunner. It's alive. We are off to Great Bend, Kansas to go see Chad over at Nobody's Auto. And we have arrived. I think what we're going to do is go find the Roadrunner and uh, go check that out. Oh my god. <laughs> Yep. It's everything I imagined. And a little less. <laughs> oh my God. You're a good body man, right? No. You can see over here, it's just kind of, you know, not exactly how you want it. We are now going to load up my new prized possession. Oh yeah, left-handed thread. Pause attraction action. Check. Suspension, check. Seat, check. Headlight bezel, check. Steering wheel, check. Chad's gonna try to straighten the roof out with his body hammer of doom. <laughs> it worked! First priority, is obviously get a meet me porn. Well, Chad, it's a pleasure doing business with you. Thanks, Dalton. Glad you made it out. Yep. And uh, thanks for that. <laughs> you know. He worked with us pretty good here to get this thing. If you need anything, just call up Chad at Nobody's Auto Salvage. Nobody else's auto. Nobody else's auto. If you need anything odd, specific things, you got a pretty good shot at getting it. And he ships all over the place. Well, here she is. We had to get out of the wind so we could actually talk. This is a real deal 69 Plymouth Roadrunner, 383 four-speed car. And it's a piece of crap. It's been rolled, wrecked, on fire. But you know what? We're gonna make it live again. Well, it's still here in the morning unfortunately. Well, we're in Great Bend. We're about to hop back on the road, but uh, Grandpa's riding right along with us in it, and uh, he's keeping a watchful eye. First fuel stop on the way back. Nothing to report. We're pretty close to home. Let's celebrate with some trailer burnouts. We're back. Totally uneventful. Old Blue just powered on through. All right, you sick freaks. It's time to get started on the rolled runner. And since you share the same disease for terrible muscle cars that I do, you're gonna like this. Let's dig in and polish this turd. This door opens. <laughs> The other one does not. This might be worse than the GTO. We don't really know much about this, uh, other than the fact it was obviously rolled and it was uh, caught on fire, apparently left to burn. This is the keep pile. The console's cool. We gotta get this door open and I think That's nice. Already better than the GTO. All right, it's time to get this thing all kinds of wet. It's pretty good in here. I mean, look at that blue, it's still in good shape. It's like no rust. The rest of it is pretty good. Next step here is gonna be to clean up all this burned up wiring. The ballast resistor has been heat treated. That where we're going either. There, looks better already. I don't think these visors are doing a lot of visoring anymore. Well, we've created a nice sized pile. Oh, good. That's a, uh, oh, not even a fist. No problem. I think our next step is going to be to start pushing with the porta power. 
things are happening. Whoa, what was that? Did it work? I really don't know. I'm kind of out of my league here, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the whole car is spread in front of me. Yeah, that actually worked. Now we want it to stay there, so we're going to leave our tension on. Where we had a almost completely fist sized hole before. Pop that out. Don't like my head right here. Seems like that could end badly. Yes. I'm gonna have to pull this quarter glass out. So I guess then we just yank off. Well, this problem took care of itself. No use crying over spilt milk. I gotta get this to move up about an inch so I can move it in closer to the pillar. Well, it's not exactly what you wanna see. Uh, this is supposed to be in there. That is quite a bit better. Let's compare sides. That's not bad. I mean, it's real bad, but I'm going to work back in here and up here and get that big kink out of the roof. There might be more glue in this than the goat. Ah! I'm going to measure how long this windshield is. We got a lot of beating to do, that's for dang sure. Let's check our progress. Yeah, move about half an inch. You all right? That looks like it moved a lot. Oh, baby. All right, here's the test. Mic mount broke. I fixed it with a self-tapper. Well, let's continue to do the same thing. I kind of want to set the glass in it just to see. That's within butch to holy goat levels. Nothing funny about hitting your funny bone. <laughs> you kidding me? That's working better? Hmm. Oh, baby, she's right on the money. Just kidding. But it only needs to go up about another, oh, inch or so. Almost. Maybe strap there to here and try to squeeze. Ugh. It does appear to be doing something. Well, we might have to move that side the old-fashioned way. What do they call that? Uh, positive thinking, like when you say something and you know it will come true. So you will cooperate. is it's not getting a roof if we got a holy go to windshield into it that's what we're gonna do here's the deal there's way more to fixing a rollover than just putting a roof on something it could be fixed by a guy with a jig and you know hundreds of hours of shop labor and a reality tv show this time on bonehead cars will we lose the shop will everybody get fired my name's clark dorkman welcome to bonehead cars We've only got 42 minutes of TV programming with breaks for commercials to get this project done. Is this some kind of joke to you? 
Is this funny? I don't think so. Just to show you how real and serious I am, I'm gonna get mad and yell and throw things! Listen up. I'm the best, and you're all fine. <laughs> Lots of drama. Look at all the drama. Bonehead colors. I'm gonna beat on this pillar a little bit more. And then I think I'm gonna beat on the back window a little bit. Then we'll try to put the windshield back in it. Let's just keep beating on it. Trying to work this crease out. There we go. We'll have to hit it with the wire wheel. Safety. Okay. I'm kind of digging this. I think I paint them black though. See if we can't get the front window in tonight. Let's see if we got anywhere with this. Oh, I think it will allow us to technically install it. Set it and forget it. Yep. It's there. Well, what do you think, Rock? <laughs> Well, that's not very nice. Well, I just bought a motor home for a 440 for the Roadrunner for $1,350. And it is absolutely disgusting. As far as motor goes, that's a 440, no doubt about it. It's got a Holly carburetor on it, no thermo quad, thank God. And boy, she just purrs like a kitten. <laughs> Well, I really think coming out the front is actually going to be the easiest way to do it. Let's go ahead and start some preliminary hacking. This would be good to replenish my bolt supply, too. There do be a 440. Got that cross member out. We got tons of room now. There we go, we made some headway. Get all the intestines out of this thing. Oops. Perfect. Lined right up. Out there, I'm in here. Yeah, I feel good about it. Oh, here goes nothing. she be 440 and finally the first good engine I've bought in months before I do any wiring under the hood here I got this can of harvest peach we could cover up some of the blue and make things kind of blend a little better notice how I didn't prep any of this and that's because we actually want it to look like the car was yellow Well, I ran out. We need to make a toggle switch panel. I was thinking we probably 
to just install it like uh, right there. Looks pretty good. So I'm thinking I'm going to precisely position the start button right in the middle of that 8. I think that'll look classy. Oh, dead nut center, man. Look at that craftsmanship. So I'm going to go ahead and drill these. Then we'll hope that I eyeball them right. That is the kind of genuine craftsmanship you're just not going to find anywhere else. Chris from No Nonsense Know How is here and uh, getting repairs on this Torino. He's driving back from Vegas. You can check that out on his channel, uh, No Nonsense Know How. And I'll put a link down in the description for that. He's just fixing everything. <laughs> getting rid of some brake rattles over bumps and such. So, huge thank you to. For letting us, uh, you know, bring this by Jen sitting in the AC. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's hot and sweaty out here. Yeah, it's like 100 degrees. Eyeball gauge is kind of losing its calibration, I think. Because I was like two inches off on that. Oh, look. Can't even tell. Well, here's our pedal assembly here. And it came like all sandblasted. Nice. Before we throw it in there, it might as well completely refurbish it oh yeah just let that dry up and then we can go ahead and bolt it in there all right so i got our you know, 32 dollar ultra mega high quality super gooder wiring kit here we just kind of stuck it up under here now we can wrap all our wires i guess we can bolt this in oh oh the bolts to the Bolts to the piece of the firewall that is no longer there. Yeah, that looks pretty bad, but other than that, it looks pretty good. Now we can mount the brake pedal assembly to the firewall again. So that, that this is going to work, I think. We need to run a battery cable from here to the uh, solenoid there, then one out the bottom of the solenoid to the starter. I forgot my dikes. That's okay, we'll just use this. That's how you get a clean cut. We're gonna land our power feed here. Alright, we'll snip that off. Safety tug. That shrunk up. Probably land it on top of here to make it a little easier. Here's our wire coming off the back of the uh, crankety crank switch. We take a break in the action. Amazing breaking news update. I got a bunch of boxes. From Irish Outlaw Garage. Interestingly decorated. Rainbows and, and, and unicorns. He had a set of these turbine wheels for his Javelin, which is the same bolt pattern as this Roadrunner. And they are um, decorated. That's all right. These are cool as hell. Looks like two sevens. And then two big old deep eights or tens, maybe. Those are going to be just perfect for this. Thanks a lot to Irish Outlaw Garage. This one appears to have been on fire. Um, so that's good. Fits right in. You can see that I've taken the red wire out of the push button and taken it up here to the S terminal. Let me hit our push button. You can hear it turn, pulling that relay in. Aha! Looky there. It's perfect. Uh, these use this, this special bracket here. That's how they make their meat meat sound. I can't wait to test El Cheapo meat meat makers. And we will, of course, secure that with a couple of self tappers. Maybe slide that on there. Then we'll go ahead and weatherproof it. There we go. Well, car's done. It was a good project, guys. Uh, yeah, so if you want to see me work on something else, uh, you know, it's it's finished now. Well, I decided we'd start on the back half of the car with these brake lights. Actually, they still had the brake light uh, lens itself. It goes up in there. But it was missing the quarter extension. Richard sent me this down to Texas. He yanked it out of a junkyard for me, out of a satellite or something. Uh, it's got the studs busted off of it, but I got a way around that. 
That's going to be a royal pain to take off if we ever have to, but it's on there. I need to make a brake light switch uh, bracket because I don't have one here. Boom. Got our little bracket here bolted to the side, nice and solid. And we'll just stick our brake light switch through. I'm just going to bring some power into one side of that brake light switch. And then on the other side of the switch, I'm just going to run a wire all the way to the back of the car, and there's our brake lights. We know it's a good running motor. We don't need to tear into it. But it's got some leaky gaskets and stuff like that, and we can go ahead and address. giant motor mounts here. They might come in handy down the road. I'll do it with a wrench. I don't want to pull the fuel pump either. I don't want to do anything. It all works. I'm leaving it alone. Number one mistake people make when working on a car. Fixing what is not broken. GD out here helping me clean this thing up. Now, so does the transmission. Well, this motor's been into, which is either a good thing or, you know, somebody like me rebuilt it, which is a bad thing. We'll just ignore that for now and try to get this thing dried up so we can paint it. Now that we've effectively created a giant environmental hazard, we'll let her dry. Well, it looks dry enough to me. What do you yep. think? Yep. So we're gonna paint this baby up hemi orange, I think. For hemi orange. Mm hmm. Look at that Magnum 440 right there. Mm -hmm. And boom, one 440 Magnum coming right up. That is gonna look sweet sitting in that piece of junk. Let's add some pizzazz to the oil film cap here. Since we'll probably be reusing all of this, because I am cheap. It's all wonky, and crooked, and terrible. It's good, it's good. So we got our motor mounts on both sides, inching our way closer to putting it in here. Let's go ahead and throw valve cover gaskets on it. Come on. Ugh, oh, they glued them on. Dang, it's spotless in there, though. Holy cow. Looky there. This baby's clean enough to eat out of. I can see right here is why the damn thing leaked. You got a leaky valve cover, and then they just start hogging down on it, trying to get it to stop. And boy, that ain't gonna do nothing except for bend the hell out of it. Both of these. No bueno. You guys know who these people are. Well, you should. Kevin. Mook. Hi. Junkyard Dates. Yeah. They stopped by with a cutlass. They're driving back from Texas. And I mean, 600 miles, this is the best we could do. Like, yeah, uh, fine, we'll stop. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know. We're kidding. We actually pushed really hard to make it here to meet this man and see I don't, the I don't know why. calamity he constructs here. <laughs> he offered his beer. That is usually the key to all friendships. <laughs> See how absolutely destroyed these rails are. What I'm going to do is stick a screwdriver handle. It's nice and round. It'll fit right up in here. Take my body hammer and just tap them down until they're flat again. Voila. Anyway, the good thing on a Chrysler is there's only two ways to put the distributor in, right or wrong because they're a blade type, there's no gear to mess with. So we know the rotor is pointing that way. All we gotta do is put the new distributor in with the rotor pointing that way. There we go, one dizzy. We're making progress. Well, I never drained the oil out of it when it was in the motor home. I didn't see any sparkly stuff, so I mean, that's always good. Oh, how big of a bucket you think that is? Oh my God, get something else. Oh. Oh my God. We're halfway there. It might be okay, it might be okay. Okay, there it goes. Okay. Oh, I don't think it's going anywhere. I hope not. God, what a, that'd be an ecological disaster. Go ahead and put our water pump on. There you go. Aha! Uh -huh. It's a little chunky, but, you know, start our new pickup in. Get another roadblock. This pan doesn't fit. It can't come far enough forward. I went ahead and ordered a six quart pan. So like most plug wire kits, this comes with eight wires of varying lengths, and a DIY coil wire, and they come with the spark plug end pre-installed. One, we marked one on the cap, is this guy, and once we start with him, then we're off to the races. And there we go. 
I want to mount the master cylinder, make a couple of brake lines, and probably go ahead and do all the brakes on the car. So what we're going to need to do to make this work is we need to mount our master cylinder to this piece of plate. This isn't going to be pretty, but it should be functional. Time to get ghetto. Uh, we got about a bike on there. Yeah, about a three, uh, about a one inch diameter. Uh huh. All right, time to get to hacking. My favorite part. Hey. You kind of smell it. I'm cooking here, right? Just kind of... Well, I've got the plate bolted in here, and now obviously we need some brake lines. What you need to do, for starters, is find the correct die for this thing, right? And so what you're going to do is put your line inside of the die, like so, and you're going to want to line that up evenly with the top of the die. Then you can clamp it in with this thing. And then, you want that to be nice. What did I do? I just broke it. What a piece of shit. I just broke it. I didn't even tighten it that tight. What the hell? Okay, don't buy this piece of shit. Look at that crack right there. Pure Chineseium. So I'm going to attempt to use this still, I guess. Maybe not. What the hell, man? It's just a 3 16 brake line and a 3 16 die. I'm going to throw this in a scrap pile so it can be returned into Chineseium like it belongs. So here's the deal. I just went ahead and used this, you know, kind of old cheapy one that I had from like a Napa or O'Reilly or something like that. And it worked. It kind of hit or miss. It did work just fine. Well, anyway, hey, I got it done. It's pretty much how you do it. Your mileage may vary. When it comes to brakes, just as a disclaimer, don't listen to the idiot on YouTube. So for a push rod, I robbed this little, uh, I guess, what I don't know what you call that, swivel joint thing off of my brother's truck. We're gonna hold this up and measure. This is so precise right here, folks. Slide that on like that, right? We thread that into there and cut the end of this bolt off and boom, you get a push rod. You guys know me, crack welder. There we go. There is one poorly welded coupling. Now we'll go ahead and grind that down so it doesn't look that bad. Put on my safety glasses. <laughs> and it is these skills that will keep me alive when Armageddon comes. Okay. Oh, that fits in there really nice actually. You can see we got a brake pedal. It works now means we're pretty much wrapped up up here except for bench bleed that obviously and I gotta put that back on so I'm looking at the rear brakes here good news is they're the right ones bad news is I don't want to unbolt and pull the axles out of this thing because I don't want to open that can of worms we're gonna disassemble all the hardware off of that and just put them on those backing plates I want to take a break from the brakes for a second picked up a steering column for 20 bucks. I put the firewall plate from the original column in here. Uh, let's, let's see what we got here. As far in as it's gonna go, let me just use this flashlight to hold it up. Yep, it's not that far from it. Yeah. Floor shift car. I mean, that's on all the way. Seems kind of dangerous, but you know. We got one little issue here is that everything actually seems to line up fairly well. You gotta get rid of not this whole outside casing, but just this like column shift part right here. Yeah, so it's in here. Feels pretty solid. So you're no doubt wondering, what are we gonna do for a steering wheel? Well, we got a perfectly good one right here. Fell right on my foot. Jeez. You know, 
Oh, that's awful. God, it's perfect. Will the brake line come free without being a douche? I'm gonna go with no. That, no way. Just came right off. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Cool. One down. Now, what do you think about painting the drums red? I think that might look kind of '80s here. Oh yeah. It look pretty sweet behind those turbine mags. I think that's gonna do it for brakes for now. I'm gonna hop on the Rock Auto, order stuff. I'm gonna show you one more thing before we wrap it up. You guys might remember these turbine mags, the other ones over there, that Jay from Irish Outlaw Garage sent me, a good buddy of mine. And, you know, I think we're gonna get rid of the clown car appeal of these. Time for it to go. So I'm just going to blast them black, like so, and then what we'll do, after I get done with that, is we'll hit them, the spokes with the DA, get them all shined back up, be looking like the General Lee. There we go. They actually look pretty tough all black, I'm not going to lie. Dig this. So let's say you're like me, you poor bastard, and you're very cheap, and the tires you buy are Nan yang di dang dang dang. What do you do, right? I can't afford raised letters. Ignore these raised letter tires. From Treadwear, paintable stencils that you can have custom made with whatever you want. So I went with PBG Maypop. Like, you know, Maypop. <laughs> I like it a lot. But I'm going the extra mile. Now, they actually recommended I don't do this. So I, of course, said, well, I'm going to try it. But we're going to experiment with just this tire and strip her all down smooth and sand it, polish it out smooth, and then paint these on. I don't actually know if this is going to work. I'm going to put 40 grit on this and try to keep it flat. Is it worth it to look cool? <laughs> That's what cars are all about. <laughs> Turned out like pretty damn cool. So I got 40 on this guy right here, and then I got 80 grit on that. So I'm grinding with 40 with this, and then 80 grit DA with that to kind of polish it. So I noticed with the 40 grit, it was opened up too much, and it was like, I was trying to wipe it off with, you know, one of these sweet Roadkill Customs rags here. And I was noticing that it was actually leaving the rag behind, and it still is a little bit, but not near as bad. Like the whole tire was red. So this is fine. I think this will be okay, like lots of armor all and stuff. This might be bad. This is going to be really bad. Oh, oh god. Oh no. What have we done? No, no. Kick it. Oh. Hey, it worked. Oh, the big fire. Well, I can't resist myself, so I'm going to try to paint one of these, even though there's no wheel on it. We'll see if it survives. Well, I had to find the dry spot to paint these in. I want to try something a little bit different here. I just realized that I now need to cover the wheel up. Dang it. This old air cleaner lid works pretty good, and it also holds the stencil flat against the tire. I have found the secret. Well, you know what, good enough. I haven't got this far by doing any of the right. Well, I'll throw a few more coats on there, but not all at once, because we learned our lesson, right? I can't help myself. I'm going to go ahead and put the one good wheel on here. Did I do a good thing or a bad thing? Ugh. Valued partner, Holly Plutz. Thanks, Holly, for this ass mat. Ugh. Ooh, that's nice. That 
is freaking badass. Sometimes what you need to get motivated on a project is just to put a set of wheels on it. Before we throw this baby back on the ground with our full custom tires, I think we should go ahead and bleed the brakes. I gravity bled the fronts, so I think now that we did that, have a little more pedal pressure and it'll blow it out the back. All right, just smash the brakes a couple of times. Hard. More. Ah, well, that worked. They do pump up decent, but... <laughs> Dang, that door almost shut that time. Uh, Dad did have these used air shocks he picked up at a swap meet for like 10 bucks. Is it just me, or is the right rear shock on this longer than the driver's rear shock? Well, naturally, I broke the Schrader valve for the air shocks, so can't air them up, but... Whatever, I ordered one, it'll be here next week, I don't know. Anyway, let's put the car on the ground. Oh, oh baby, she's got the look. Look at that. Would you just look at it? Just look at it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I love it. It'll look even better with a 440 sitting bringing that front end down just a little bit. We get those air shocks to air up and put just a little bit of air in them to kick that ass up a little. 440 in there, drop the front down a little. We are here with the Roadrunner and Buff from Buff's Garage, who's gonna help me install the 440 and a torque flight that's been underwater into this Roadrunner. And hopefully by the time we're done, it makes beautiful noises. My expectations are pretty low. Well, there's the trans we're using, and it's out of that 67 Fury. It came with some topsoil. You got it? No. No? Yeah, I uh, always have this problem. Every time. Ah! Nope. And a big negative goat rider. I'll take it back out. No way. Is that, is that it? No. Nope. Oh, I got it! I fucking got it! I just had to get it started. Oh my god, it sounds awful. Am I getting close? Um, you got an inch or two. Can I grab this and get like... Oh, oh look at that. Oh, just leave it right there. Got mine started. I'm so close. Dirt filled piece of crap. Ah! Shove it all the way back. Okay. Oh, dude, that's gross. Yeah, good. Oh. Hey, I guess we're done. Well, that's as far as it goes. I think we're ready to attempt stabbing. Dude, don't scratch it. <laughs> All right, I can go down a little bit. Yep. I'm just trying to... Yeah. Oh yeah. Now we gotta come down. Oh man. Just shove it in. Uh. Oh. Oh. Yeah, just bend it. It'll be fine. Oh. Like a glove. Oh yeah. Installed money. Well, that was easy. Piece of cake. All right, so what we got to do here is make a carb gas. Oh yeah, the engine's in the car, by the way. We need to make a carb gas, but we don't have one. It's late. So we're just gonna trace around this adapter here, and boom, bolt that down. So our whole goal here is just to get the damn thing to start, right? We got a hundred things that need done. He's trying to get a fuel line on. I'm fighting the starter. And we're gonna wire the starter up and we should have crankage. All right, so we are almost wired for sound. It did something! <laughs> I'm seeing sparks. <laughs> it's sparking everything. <laughs> Dude, that starter is. Oh, <laughs> what is going on down there? Good job, buddy. <laughs> I got a cross member, trans cross member on eBay for 80 bucks with bolts. Gotta rebuild everything. Look at that. It's brand new. Mm -hmm. Powder coated. Mm -hmm. Now we just gotta bake it on there. 
We are losing the shop. I broke the exhaust manifold because I'm stupid, so I have a new one of these coming as well. You know, live and learn, $80 mistake. I just broke the transmission mount, which is a bummer that the bolts was stuck. And, you know, I really probably shouldn't have been trying to use this anyways. So, uh, goodbye. Next on the agenda is we need some kind of a shifter. Well, this one here might work. Before I break out the cutoff wheel, I'll just try gently persuading it. Well, this is going about as well as I would have expected. Audios. That's dangerous as hell. There we go. Now we can get low. Oh, somewhere in here will be second. Oh crap, reverse power code. Oh, no. I got a new transmission mount. So we'll throw in our new cross member. First things first, let's toss this cross member up to make sure she's done. She's what we need. Oh yeah. After much pain and gnashing of the teeth, I got all the bolts in, uh, except for this one. I'm sure the car being completely tacoed has nothing to do with why it didn't want to fit. Three out of four ain't bad, just like Meatloaf said. So I went ahead and replaced that exhaust manifold over here. Uh, I got a new one on eBay, only 80 bucks. Shit. Now what we're going to do next is throw this fuel filter uh, right before the fuel pump, about right thereabouts. Oh, well, there we go. That looks pretty nice and tidy in there. It's a literally the cheapest radiator I could find on eBay. It was $117 for this. Actually, pretty nice. I'm going to need to gently persuade like this area and maybe uh, some of that area there and you know, just to straighten it out a little. Ooh, too far. We'll use some longer bolts. So yeah, maybe just drop her on in. Oh. That's not too bad. Let the bolts line up. Well, cross thread it. Nature's lock tight. I got the finest radiator hoses I could find. Uh, you know, they almost fit. And we got all these hose clamps we salvaged out of the motorhome. So, you know, that thing really continues to pay for itself. In fact, JD and a buddy of his are out hanging out in there right now. The old saying is, you know, measure twice, cut once. Well, I just measure none and cut like four times until I get where I need to be. And uh, yeah, it works for me. Let's see what our fitment's like now. Oh, yeah. Kind of starting to look like an engine bay in here. Ugh. Well, here's what I got for a drive shaft. Now, I use Southwest Speed for all of my drive shafts. Nope, a little hard to see, but it fits absolutely perfect. We gotta wrap up a couple of things, but let's see if we can get this thing to run like on its own. Maybe see if it'll move is the goal today. So rather than try to use the overly complicated, heavy, and terrible Mopar alternator, I will go ahead and, you know, throw this away and put a GM alternator on it because that requires like 15 wires or something and this needs one. Here's what I got going for an alternator bracket. So I ordered the cheapest Chinesium alternator bracket kit I could find. And it looks like it's going to mount that GM alternator pretty well. Oh, good. Yeah, now that'll self clearance. <laughs> Incredible. So now that we got that on there, we only have to run one wire right out of the back of that alternator straight over to the uh, battery or the uh, starter solenoid over there on the battery side of it, and we're in business. Yeah, we got her landed over here. Used a big old fat heavy wire here, even though that alternator probably puts out about an amp. Anyway, it's time to drop the pan on this and... <laughs> Sounds like... It's solid. I got a filter for it. That'll fix it right up, I'm sure. Whoa. Hmm. That's... Son of a gun. Wow. It's not that bad. There's fluid in it. Hey. This is now three transmissions in a row on the channel that I have found a leaf inside. Wow. I only work on good stuff. 
I think we got a running chance here. I really do, actually. I'm not going to say it's going to work right, but I bet it moves the vehicle thing. I'm rebuilding it right now. Yeah. yeah. And looking pretty rebuilt, I think. We'll just slap a new filter in it. Call it a day. I think that's it. I think that's it. I don't know. There's a the... ton of threaded holes in it that just don't do anything, yeah. apparently. Well, maybe they're like... They're just for looks, I think. Uh -huh. Like, man, that would the look really cool. The oh, dude, that's just a Mopar thing. It's all style and performance. Ugh. Oh, my God. Ugh. So much for that. Sure cleaned up really nice, right? Except for, uh, you know, this hole right there. I think we'll just rob the one off that motorhome transmission. Well, the motorhome transmission pan cleaned up a little bit nicer. Although. Still really rust pitted and stuff on the outside. What'd they make these things out of? Schlitz cans? Yeah, let's go ahead and prep this surface perfectly. So we don't want to tighten any of these down until we get them all in there. Now we're gonna cross thread these in a uh, alternating pattern. So we gotta make some tranny lines for it. I found this random piece of pipe here. I don't know what it's for. I don't know what else we might have around here, but I think this is probably it. Oh! Cool. Yeah. Cut. Uh, hmm, gee. No, this would never work. Okay, well, we'll use this. Like I said, you know. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like I already said. I wasn't, like, planning on doing anything else because I'm kind of a professional. Now, the flavor of transmission cooler I got today is uh, the cheapest transmission cooler available at O'Reilly, which is a Hayden unit. Uh, we're just gonna, you know, kind of just put it up in this general vicinity-ish, you know, kind of here, probably. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. Oh, looks nice, huh? Shiny. Yeah, it does. See? It's shiny. Shiny means good. It is good. shiny. Kind of. So, we're just gonna hook it up with some random scraps of hose I have. Now, let's go ahead and fill her up with some antifreeze. And, uh, hopefully it doesn't pour right on the ground. What do you think? It pours right on the ground? Pours right on the ground. There's a rust hole in it. Probably is. Is it pouring on the ground? No. Okay. It's a plus. We got the fix for the transmission right here. It's going to get rebuilt. Got these for $3 at Walmart like two years ago. So, so I'm sure it's going to be fine. fine. So we'll pour this in first. So it's the first thing it really gets to eat, you know? Oh, oh wow. Yeah. You want to see if it's pouring on the ground? Yeah. No. Really? Not yet. Wow. That one's a different color than the other one. You notice that? This one's red. The other one was orange. Huh, yeah. Hmm. Maybe they're different. Well, it's because one is better. It's extra uh -huh. good. Yeah. Really good. Let's we'll see if we can make this thing run for real. Oh yeah, lots of gas. We can just get her to pull some gas. Yeah. She'll be in good shape. Let's take a look at that filter. A whole lot of nothing. You want gas? You got it. Anything? No. Well, it's totally possible that line is plugged. We're gonna try to blow this line out here. It's blown out of this thing. It's not even hooked up. <laughs> Why? Why won't it work? Uh, I are genius. <laughs> oh, that was dumb. What'd you do? Oh, I just rust. <sighs> mm, yay. Tasty. Oh. So the fuel line's broken in half here. And I was kind of hoping that we could just... Okay, it's broken in a lot of places. <laughs> But it looked pretty good up to here. But I'm just sucking air again. Can you give me the uh, the long one and we'll just run a all new line? Okay. Now let's see if we can get some gas to it. Keep an eye on that fuel filter. <coughs> gas! <laughs> lots, lots of gas. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh, too much gas? Yes. Right. Nothing. Nothing. Brand new starter solenoid is apparently bad because I could jump right to it then do anything. I could jump right across it. 
So, of course, this car again. All right, now let's see what happens. And it's dead again. Oh my god. You real I can't make this stuff up. Anything that we do to this car has to be a hundred times as hard. Oh yeah. That lot. was a lot. So we got lots of gas. Mm -hmm. So we hook this thing back up. And then it should pump gas up. Car should run. I'm going to leave it off of the car here. We'll see if it pumps up here. Yeah. And if it doesn't, well... I'm going to light it on fire. <laughs> Possible. Is it this that's plugged somehow? You got a kink in it's it? It's new. I know. It's all brand new stuff. Why? Why? Why does it have to be this way? You know, I'm putting that clicky clack on. That's what I'm doing. Got our OSHA approved fuel system rigged up here. <laughs> yeah, this is fine. And guess what? Hmm. Oh, the solenoid's stuck again. Let's create sparks next to the gas. <laughs> Did it unstick it? No, of course it didn't. I hate this car. Selling it right now. <laughs> oh my god, just... Why? Why? It runs great, but it went into gear. It did. It went into first and reverse. Uh -huh. So I mean, it, it's still it's probably super low on fluid. For whatever reason, it'll pull gas with the electric clicky clack pump now. Uh, it would not do that last night. So I guess let's see if it'll run and move. Make sure it's in park. Sure. It moved. Yeah, it moved. It's running. Let the air clear a little bit, but after that, I don't know what else to do with this thing. Uh, I really don't want to drop the money on a transmission rebuild. Maybe somebody else does. But for me, I think I'm done with it if the transmission won't work. So we're going to bolt some seats in here. We're going to put a gas pedal in it. And we're going to try to shove it outside where maybe we can get some motion with the thing and maybe it'll take off i don't know it's pipe dream but it's worth a shot so what i got for a gas pedal here is a super cheap universal spoon pedal thing for like a street rod you just mount it on the firewall push it do gas pedal things of course going to mount it the only way i know how which is with self tappers so i got the industrial strength self tappers this time now that the throttle pedal is mounted poorly, we have to mount the cable, and it said measure, so I read that as don't. So that sticks in here like this. Probably, somewhere, near. And instead of like doing what they told me to do, I'll just uh, eyeball it down there and get the pedal high. How, oh, oh, I was hitting the battery cable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It was like, wait, what? That shouldn't make sparks. <laughs> you know, sometimes a car wants to live, and sometimes it doesn't. This one doesn't. This one doesn't. Gonna cut it. I don't know somewhere in here. I think we got her working. Lord. That's it. Yep. God. So we're gonna put these hideous red Camaro seats in here. I got a pair of them, and we do have the original back seat still. How I will uh, make the marks for this is take some spray paint just dust it over the holes something bright you can see and then you'll just drill where the hole is and there is one hideous 79 Camaro bucket seat 
Uh, I'll throw the other one in. And there we go, two hideous 79 Camaro bucket seats. Now, I'm not a total hack, so I did install the buddy seat. I found that a pair of vice grips corrects the gas pedal issue nicely. She's running off the mechanical pump and pulling from her own tank now, just fine. Runs great. Well, right at this moment, my camera audio died. And it was right as me and JD were pushing the car out of the garage because it, for whatever reason, would not roll backwards. We had to push and shove and JD pushed as hard as he could. Finally, we got it to roll down the hill, out into the driveway, and it took off. Now, I do have some audio of this, but this whole clip is just dead. And it's a real shame. It's the first time that car has moved in 30 years you're watching right now. And it's it's really amazing, actually, that that transmission even works. Uh, but we'll catch up here in a second. got all we were going to get out of that guy. Well. <laughs> Let's pull the stick. Is it empty? That's or? how it got to move. Wow. <laughs> I don't know why it was blowing it all over the place. So my audio cut out while we were driving the car earlier. I, I want to see if it'll move again. We're going to do our best with it in the dark here and I'll try to get it up here on the driveway. But this is what we're working with. I swear, man. I just can't win for losing. There's the Roadrunner. It's alive, by God. I'm happy with it. I think, are you happy with it? Yeah, no. <laughs> but I, uh, I'm pretty pleased. I mean, at least it runs and it moves. If you let it cool off, it drives fine for some reason. Yeah. I think we've accomplished our goal, which was we pulled this out of a junkyard and brought a second gasp of life into it. Anyway, if you like this, or if you don't like this, make sure you hit the like and subscribe on, uh, Stay tuned to Pole Barn Garage YouTube.